The Torah portion this week talks about what we call the incorrigible sun. It asks the timeless question, what do you do if you have a child that won't listen to you? If time and time again, you reinforce your perspective, properly apply discipline, but she or he will not heed you, how should you respond? If you have young children, or you can remember what it's like to have young children, or you've ever seen a single young child, then you already know that figuring out how to cope with defiance is an essential everyday reality. As far as I'm concerned, getting your children to school when there was school, dressed in weather appropriate clothing, well enough fed and on time without a major act of defiance is like the triple crown of parenting. Can it be done an entire morning when your child does exactly what you want when you want them to? It's actually amazing. You can be a successful professional, an educated person, a relatively mature human being, but getting your child to wear socks is nearly impossible. It's humbling, actually. So I wanted to know, for my own sake, and for the sake of all of the other parents out there, what does Torah say to do when your child defies you? First, the Torah says, the parents discipline the child. Then, if the child doesn't listen, both parents bring the disobedient child before the elders of the town in a public space. Next, the parents simply explain that their son is disloyal and defiant, and then the town council stones the child. Thanks, Tora, for the wisdom on this one, but I'll pass. As you probably know, every ounce of biblical commentary makes it very clear that this act never actually happened. We didn't do this, we don't think it's a good idea to do this, and we never would do this conversation to be continued tomorrow morning at Torah study on that one. But I'm still wondering, what do Jews actually think about defiance? What do you do when someone defies you? And when do you decide to defy someone else? It's an important question for us, especially during these very heated times. Jews, of course, have this intimate history with defiance and also with the opposite, compliance. Have you ever been to Tel Aviv in the summer? It's hot, it's sticky, it's unbearable. So of course, you wanna take a dip in the water, walk to the beach, and you see huge signs that say, no swimming, there are jellyfish everywhere. Everyone could shout out right now because they know what every single Israeli is doing. Swimming, of course. To many Israelis, defiance is like breathing. The idea of following a rule just because it's a rule seems outrageous and offensive. A friend of mine was once harmlessly waiting in the line at a shuk in Jerusalem for some rugula when an old lady scolded her. A line, the woman said? We don't wait in lines. Jonah defied God's demand through, uh, Jonah defied God's demand and threw himself into the belly of a fish. Abraham defied God's demand and negotiated against the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Defiance runs deep with us. And yet, our Torah verse tells us defiance is punishable with death. So what do we think about it? Jews seem to exist in this tension between defiance and obedience. The truth is, there is no roadmap that tells us when to be defiant and when to submit that would defeat the whole purpose. That sort of thing would contradict the very essence of saying no and taking a stand. So knowing there is no one single right way, I'll give two suggestions. Suggestion one, defy when justice is at stake. When you see injustice, seek justice. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof, justice, justice you shall pursue, not because it's a maxim, because it's moral. If you think something is wrong and you're thinking of speaking out, speak out. Even if you're a minority, even if you're the only one, when there is injustice, you simply must name it. Defiance 
is our birthright. Don't be afraid to exercise it. Suggestion two. Defiance is almost always better than indifference. When the choice is defiance or indifference, we should choose the former. The Parsha tells us, if you see your fellow Israelites ox or sheep gone astray, do not ignore it. You must take it back to your peer. If the Torah says you come across an animal that fell on the side of the road, do not ignore it. You must help to raise it up. So too shall you do with anything that your fellow Israelites lose and you find. You must not remain indifferent. It's definitely easier said than done. How many times a day do you see something a little bit off and ignore it? Many, many times. Maybe you heard a joke that rubbed you the wrong way, but you chose not to say something because you didn't want to make waves. Maybe you saw someone that needed help, but we didn't want to help because we were in a rush. Happens more and more in my neighborhood every day. But we can't. Because, as I said, defiance is almost always better than indifference. Have you ever spoken out against something when it was really hard? Have you ever intentionally disobeyed a rule out of a sense of justice? Have you ever been convinced of your perspective, even though you were the only one who had it? Why did you defy the rules? What made you do it? I said I'd give two suggestions. But of course, here's a third. Defy when you feel the need to do it in your kishkas. When you know that something is off, but you can't put your finger on it, let your instincts be your guide. We have a theology built upon commandments. We are obligated to obey. Compliance is deeply rooted aspect of the Jewish character, but so is defiance. And sometimes we have no choice but to listen to that voice clearly and loudly. Let's let it ring out. Shabbat Shalom.